Hey guys, in this particular video I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to use uh, a layer mask with pixels. So meaning that instead of using an adjustment layer we're going to be using a second photograph. Uh, to begin with I'm going to get a second photograph. So I have one here and I'm going to use the move tool once again. I'm going to hold down the shift key, click and drag up to the tab and then release and it centers over the original photo. Uh, I am going to go over to layer one or the layers panel and then with layer one being active that's the layer that we're currently looking at. Uh, I want to point out the couple of different ways uh, that we can add a layer mask to the image or to this particular layer. Going up to the layer menu you can go down to the layer mask option and then either choose reveal all or hide all. So keep in mind we talked about white and black so reveal all is going to add a layer mask which is going to be filled in with white so that's going to allow the the image that's on this particular layer to show at 100 percent opacity if that's where we're at I'm going to undo that and once again go back up to the layer menu down to layer mask and this time I'm going to choose hide all now with hide all, what this is going to do is it's going to add the layer mask and it's also going to fill the mask in with black and black is going to hide the image. So in a sense, the image has been erased, um, but it has not been erased. I remember I referred to that as my Bruce Leeism where erasing without um, without really erasing. So I'm going to undo that as well and point out the couple of different the, the way that we can add a layer mask on uh, directly um, in the layers panel. Down at the bottom of the layers panel we have this icon here the third one from the left the add layer mask option. If you click on that it's going to add the layer mask and it's going to be filled in with white to reveal all. I'm going to undo that. If you hold down the option key and click on that icon it's going to add the layer mask but it's also going to fill the mask in with black so essentially we have the hide all option all right so now once the the layer mask is in place um, keep in mind I had pointed out shortcuts for your uh, foreground and background colors uh, to fill with your foreground color you use the option delete op, uh, keys or on a PC that would be the backspace key uh, alt and backspace so I'm gonna hold down the option key and hit delete and we'll see that the mask changes to white so back over here in the layers panel the mask itself changes to white the background color is black so fill with the background color I'm gonna hold down the command key which would be the equivalent of the control key on the PC and then hit delete so you see that that fills in with black so we can quickly go back and forth uh, this is known as inverting okay so I'm gonna leave it at black uh, I also want to remind you guys that uh, we can see the properties for the layer mask itself by double clicking on it you double click on it it opens up the properties panel which then allows us to make further adjustments to the mask so currently the mask is set to black and we have a couple of uh, options here that we can take a look at uh, starting at the top we have the select the layer mask and then we had it at we have the add a vector mask we didn't talk about adding a vector mask to the image that's beyond the scope of what we're doing in the class then we have the density as far as the density goes it's at hundred percent this is sort of like the opacity of the um, of the mask itself uh, instead of referring to it as opacity it's the uh, density of it so how dense the blacks are so you notice that as I drag this down the layer mask itself becomes in this case 45 percent gray all right so the lighter that the mask is the more of the image we're going to see from that layer and the less of the image in the background or the layers under it we're going to see so it's kind of like lowering the opacity under that we have the feather um, the feather is just gonna feather the edge how hard or how soft the edge of the mask is um, we didn't get into these options down here under refine uh, there's a, a way to um, refine the mask edge 
uh, which is a selection. We didn't discuss that at all in the class, so I'm going to skip over that. And the same thing with the color range. So you can um, locate other videos if you guys are interested in uh, learning a little bit more about these two options. Then we have the invert option. The invert option is essentially what I showed you with the fill. Uh, so right now the layer mask is black. If we invert that, everything that is black is going to essentially become white. So if I click on invert, now the mask becomes white. Click on invert again, what was white is now going to become black. Now to take this a little further, I'm just going to make a quick selection and I'm going to fill that with white, which is a foreground color. So I'm going to use option delete. So if you take a look at the layer mask over here, I have a white rectangle against a black mask. All right, so the area that's white allows the image to show through. The area that's black masks out the image to, so we can see the background image. All right, so if I hit invert here, we're going to see the opposite. Clicking on invert is going to take the white rectangle and make it black, which is going to mask it out and make the black area that was around the outside white. So now we can see that portion of the image. And then we're essentially cutting a hole into the image to see through to the layer down below it, which is where the violin is. Okay, so that's what the invert option is here. Now, we also didn't talk about uh, the buttons down here, really, um, for loading a selection because we didn't get into selections at the time. So we're not covering that. We're also, I'd also don't want to uh, discuss applying a mask at this time, but when you click on this, what it does is it physically applies the mask and erases all the pixels. Okay. And then, uh, the eyeball, the eyeball allows you to enable or disable the mat, the mask itself. So you click on that and that just turns it on or turns it off. Uh, the shortcut key, if you recall, is using the shift key while clicking on the mask itself to do the same thing. Okay, so those are the options that are in your properties panel. I'm going to go ahead and close that up. Now, I also want to remind you guys, before I go any further with this, I want to remind you about these four corners here, especially when working with pixels. When, you, when I go to the uh, switch over to the background layer, and then I switch back up to layer one, notice that I didn't click on the layer mask, but I clicked over on the side here. Take a look at where these corners now are. They're on the pixels. Okay, so for example, if I were using a paintbrush and I were painting with black here, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going painting there, and because the mask is already black, nothing's happening. But if you take a look at the image here, you'll notice that I was physically painting on the image itself, on the pixels themselves. So I'll disable the mask so that we can see that. Because I wasn't paying attention to it, or if that's the case, if you're not paying attention, you could be ruining your image. Okay, so um, I am going to undo that. Let's go ahead and undo the painting that I did. All right, and now uh, let's talk about how the mask, what we can do with the mask itself. Okay, so I'm going to undo the brush stroke that I made, and I just want to remind you once again that wherever these corners are, that is what you're essentially working on. So when the corners were around the, the uh, pixel uh, image, what I was doing is I was painting on here. If I want to edit the mask, I have to click on the mask to move those corners over to it, and now we'll know that we're actually working with it. Uh, another thing I didn't point out was what this uh, chain link does, at least I don't think so. The chain link connects the two of them together, which means that when you move one, you're also moving the other. So if I take the move tool and I click on the image, which is the, uh, the sheet music here, if I click on it and move it, you'll see that it also moves the mask as well. So not only is the entire layer moving, but you'll see that the mask is moving as well. So I'll put that back into place. And then what I'll do is I'll click on that chain link to separate them. So now, depending on which one is selected, that's the one that you're going to be moving. So if I have the mask selected and I click and drag, I'm now moving the mask. So I can reveal other areas or hide other areas of the image of the layer simply by moving the mask to a new position. If I click on the image and I use the move tool to move it around, what I'm actually doing is keeping the mask in place 
but moving the image to another area. So this might be useful for some of the compositing that you may find yourself doing. All right, so I'm going to click back on that chain link to put it back into place. And I'm going to start all over by filling the mask with white and break this down on how we can work with this. So some really quick uh, editing tips for you guys. Um, you can use the, the gradient tool, which you'll find here on the toolbar. The gradient tool, uh, you can use your foreground and background colors with a linear gradient. So you could choose either black or white or foreground and background. And then simply click and drag. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a gradient on the mask. So keep in mind once again that the white is going to show and the black is going to erase. So you can click and drag any direction that you like to combine your images together. Now at this point, if I didn't want to see this far right portion of the, um, of the book, I could actually break the chain link. So this is a, an example of how you can use that. And then click on the image, the pixel layer, and slide the music over to show more of the music. All right, so that's an example of where you can use this chain link option. So I'm going to undo that, put it back into place, and also put the um, chain link back in place as well. All right, so once again, going back to the mask, I'm going to fill that in with white. We can use the gradient tool. We can also use a paintbrush. Keep in mind what I mentioned about the paintbrush, that you can right-click directly on your image. And by right-clicking on the image, what it will do is it will open up the uh, brush options where you can change the size of the brush. You can also change the hardness. The higher the hardness is, the harder the edge of the brush is going to be. The lower the hardness is, the softer the edge is going to be. You can also choose from one of the brushes that are down here. All right, so I have a, um, I'm going to choose a larger brush and a hardness value of zero. That's going to allow me to paint on the image. And while I'm painting, make sure that you're choosing the opposite color. While I'm painting, in this case I'm painting with black, I'm erasing and you can see how soft the edge is here. If I want to make my brush larger to do more work um, or cover a larger area, I can also, uh, once again, right click to open this box up and increase the size of the brush. But another way that you can increase the size of your brush and the hardness are using shortcut keys on your keyboard. So I'm going to use the control key and the option key to click and drag to scrub left or right to make the brush bigger or smaller. So dragging to the right makes the brush bigger, dragging to the left makes the brush smaller, or scrubbing up or down, dragging down makes the brush harder, dragging up makes the brush softer. So I can now click and drag on the image to paint more to give it a softer edge. And you can see again with the, the, the lower the hardness is, the softer the edge is going to be, so it's going to provide a nice little transition between the two images in this case, or the two layers. The other thing I want to bring to your attention are the opacity and the flow options up at the top. So we talked about them in class. I'm not going to get into them at this point in time, but I just want to remind you about those. And also keep in mind that at any point in time, you can switch your colors. So you can use this arrow here on the upper right of the foreground and background colors to swap them or to switch them, or you can use the shortcut key, which is the letter X on the keyboard. So that will also switch them as well. So currently I painted with black to erase here. So I'm going to switch colors by tapping the X key and I can paint with white to bring the image back in. Okay. And, um, that's a quick review of, uh, working with layer masks. So hopefully this will, um, uh, keep you guys motivated to experiment a little bit more with this and I will catch you in the next video.